Okay, so let's get started. This is a meeting of the Saugus Board of Appeals. Uh, first thing I'd like to do is introduce the board members Peter Rossetti, Stephanie Romano, Bob Northup, Chris Riley, and John Cannon, and myself, Tom Travis. Um, the way we normally conduct our hearings is, is generally informal. We follow the agenda as it appears in the newspaper advertisement. If anyone is under some personal pressure and needs to be heard out of order, please let it be known to the chair at this time. Noting that, I will continue. You are before the board because you are planning to do something to your property that is not in conformance with requirements of zoning bylaws. There are three reasons to come before in front of this board. The first is for a variance for some dimensional relief. The second is a special permit to do something to your property. Or the third is an appeal of the decision of the building inspector. Um, I've asked all the board members to view the properties and prepare to make decisions this evening if we have enough information to do so. Um, Stephanie, our clerk, will go over details. It's 14 days to prepare a decision, waiting period to 21 days, and we'll meet tonight. And then on, if you have any questions on Monday, you can go through with her, and she'll walk you through that process. Once done with the decision, you'll get a recording number, and you'll bring it back to the special services, and then in turn get that uh, recorded to register your deeds. Um, at this time, are there any questions? Uh, I'd like to uh, go forward with uh, John Cannon leading us in uh, the Pledge of Allegiance. The Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And if you're going to speak tonight, you need to be sworn in. So please raise your, please uh, raise your right hand. I swear to tell the whole truth, the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So I'm going. Okay. okay. Um, and the first petition we have tonight is on Five Clifton Street. This is a continued position. I see the petitions here along with uh, Mr. Dwyer representing. Mr. Chairman, for the record, uh, board members David Dwyer, Audie and Dwyer Lanceveres, 59 Appleton Street here in Saugus. Um, this is our second meeting on this. We've made some adjustments to the plan um, and some additions to the plan. I uh, did meet with Captain Phelan of the Fire Department to talk about the gas grill. Uh, he did send a letter in which went to myself and to Stephanie. Um, I don't know if the board members have a copy of that. Copy. Okay. We all got a copy. Yeah. Um, so he wanted to just check on the specs for the grill, which he did, and um, also made comment that there'd be no siding, you know, no sides, even tops or plastic put on the uh, proposed gazebo. Um, I met this morning with... Just to continue, he did say something about a hood too, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, he, no combustible material above, so he wants a, a vent, he said. Okay, a vent or a hood or something up there. Right, or so, yeah, and um, there is a note on the new plan. You should have it there in front of you, Tom. I left one on okay. your desk there. A um, couple of notes on the plan that I did change. Um, I did add in <coughs> the kitchen area so you can see where everything is, the grill the uh, burner um, and uh, the sink. Uh, the sink is not plumbed. There's no water to it, no drain to it. Um, and the uh, um, Mr. Santa Maria has agreed that the, Captain Phelan is also a plumber and he did notice that. So he said that um, that would, the client has agreed, my client's agreed to um, only use that as a ice bucket Okay. So it'd be like a cooler. He's going to get a cover to put over it. Um, we did move the the drip edge back from the property line to um, line up with the kitchen area. The kitchen area is in the green. The new line is in the blue. That would bring it back to 3.6 um, feet from the property line proposed. So we'd cut that back. He would move the post so the post was. Um, at least five feet from the property line. Um, 
on the, uh, the zoning. You know, we're asking for relief from 10 feet, but um, under section 6.8 E um, C, that um, a roof eave can uh, can extend beyond the zoning line, not more than two feet. So. If the post was, if it was granted to five, the drip edge would still be less than two feet from the post itself. But the variance we would be asking for because it's 10 feet or eight feet on a, on a drip so edge. the main structure is still five feet away. I'm just trying to. Yeah, the, yeah. I mean, the post. Just, it's just the. The drip edge would be within 3.6 3 feet where okay, eight but the main feet, building is still five feet away. Does, yeah, the post supporting it. Yeah, if I can interrupt you, no is that? I'm, I'm not. What do board members think about that? I'm, I'm not following this. What okay. you're describing, maybe I'm looking at the drawing line. Okay. But doesn't this drawing show that the post? Doesn't it show where the post is? The post is hmm. two feet. Yeah, so. Just over two feet from the property line, right? Yeah, so that's what's existing and um, we would have to be cutting all of that back. So that's why that's in a shaded or a lighter color. The blue, the heavy blue line is what it's going to be proposed to cut back to. That post is what's existing and would have to be moved back to at least five feet from the property line. Okay, but if the blue line is what you're going to pull it back to, the drawing still says it's three and a half feet. Yeah, so that's to the drip edge of the roof. So if this was just a drip edge and um, you're allowed up to two feet into the zoning, so if it's a 10-foot setback, y your drip edge could be eight feet. All right, so the, the drip edge is 3.6 feet. Then there's, there's two more feet to the structure. To the post holding up the structure, oh, yeah. Right, yeah. And there'll be no walls on this inclusive of yeah. um, tarps or screening or anything that the fire department uh, the fire captain mentioned that when we were out there and also put it in his email okay thank you um you can continue um i also in in the red there um it says proposed removal of existing roof line leaving a setback of 3.6 where 10 is required. It's really eight, but um, that's what I have on here. Below that it says proposed fire uh, retardant material above grill and burner to be approved by the building department and the fire department and the sides are to remain open and free of any obstructions. I don't know what they could do for a vent, but he would have to approve that with the fire department and the building department before it would go forward. So, okay. uh, anything else on the board? I have a question. Where is the water running on the on the drawing? You said so, it's outside, but where yeah, is there's. Um, we're going to do a proposed gutter, and it would run to the bottom of your plan behind the uh, garage, the existing garage. It would run into the garage. No, just along towards the back part of the property there, behind the garage okay. down. And if you'd like, we could have them put a pit in there to drain it into. But it's not going into the neighbors, it's going towards... No, it would come along the drip edge towards the street and empty out behind the existing garage of my clients. Okay, thank you. But that's still two feet from the neighbors, right? 3.6. Okay, 3.6. Yeah. Any other questions from the, have you pretty much completed your presentation? Yes. Before I open up yeah, the Yeah, unless there's any questions. Okay. I want to open up to the audience. Are there any comments? Yes, ma'am. And my name is Julie Bushy. I'm the representative who's representing my parents who own the property. I, I guess one of the biggest concerns is the proximity of a um, grill underneath a wooden structure which they had planned on putting a roof on. So right now they have the, uh, the things that the roof sits on, but they haven't put the roof on it yet. 
So right. That's why, if you remember last time when we had, mm -hmm. I said, we should get the fire department down there to look at it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they went, Captain Fallon went down, he was a fire per mm -hmm. and stated that it's, they need to have venting, non combustible material, like a hood or something like that. And they're not going to sign off in her mm -hmm. if there's anything combustible up there. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the other concern is if there is water that's going to be draining where it's so close to the property, the you know the risk of having any water leaking into the basement is a concern. Uh, but I think my, the biggest concern really was from a safety perspective. Now, if they don't have any water in that sink, should there be a fire, an inadvertent fire? How are that? How is it going to be put out? Well, they still might have a spigot in the backyard with a hose or whatever, same mm -hmm. as anybody else has a grill in their backyard. Mm -hmm. And they, they do have, and they do have one. I would assume there is a spigot. You might, you can have hose over there yeah, while you're you got grilling. Hose, uh, you just got a pool. Right. Yeah. You got a pool there. Yeah. So they could, got a pool, yeah. there's going to be a spigot there, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which would, in an emergency, they could use. Mm -hmm. But we're making it non combustible we have moved that post over to five feet away. Mm -hmm. It's just the top. It's just the top this of the roof is, line that extends over. Mm -hmm. They'll do what they can for water runoff from that mm -hmm. roof. Mm -hmm. I understand that's an issue too. Mm -hmm. If there's something else can be improved there. It's not that big a space no. area anyway, where I think it would gather a lot of, you might want to enlighten me a little bit on that, but it's not a big roof. It's not, there's not gonna be a ton of runoff it is from a big now. roof. From just the gazebo? Yeah. It's 17 by 31 feet. The roof line is bigger than the roof okay. line of their garage. Yeah. All right, could we do something to improve the water right off? And yeah, so if I may, it, it would only shed half of the roof and the, the proposed size cutback would be 28 feet. So it's only gonna, it's only going to take half of the roof because of the pitch is pitching right. towards your house mm -hmm. of half of the roof. So the other half would go into uh, Mrs. Santa Maria's driveway. Okay. Um, but the idea is to put a gutter along that edge and then drain it into the ground <clears throat> beside his Mr. Santa Maria's existing garage. Which is in between our house and mm -hmm. in the garage. If it can be directed more out towards the street, that probably would be yeah, it could be, be better. It, it could come down and then run a pipe mm -hmm. out towards the front part of his garage. And you're willing to do that? Yeah. Mr. Santeria, are you yeah. willing to do that? Yeah. Okay. Anything else? I want no. you to be pleased. I don't no, before you no. leave. No, no. I mean, I, I, I guess. We're trying to do the best we can. To no, I understand. I mean, sure I know that there's not a lot of room, and we just certainly don't want to have any untoward problems because of the proximity between that gazebo, the garage, and the house. Which, if right, there that's is a fire we, that's get out, that gets out of control, that's why we try to address the big things: the, the fire problem, the safety mm -hmm. issue there. We've now we've addressed the water. Mm -hmm. We've pushed the building by, <laughs> off the lot line. Mm -hmm. um, I just want your parents mm -hmm. and yourself to be leave here feeling that you know it, it's a it's a fair deal. Mm -hmm. Okay, as long as the fire department approves everything that's done the and building, every, it's gonna everything be that can possibly do, be done to prevent our decision fire. will have in it mm -hmm. a final approval of the building and fire departments. Okay. All right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yep. Anyone else in the audience? Mr. Uh, just a question um, to the left side of the garage is there a gate there yeah okay is that locked no no he even okay. went and checked it out okay and the the gate in front is not locked that's not going to be locked okay okay uh, do you do you have a problem conditioning that just in case there is a problem in the backyard and someone has to get back there if they have to have the scrounge for a key no, no, it's open. You can get okay. It okay. Anything else on the board? Again, anything from the audience? Um, do I have a motion? Motion to close the hearing. Yeah. Okay. Second. Peter, would you like to read this in? Uh, sure. 
Okay, on the petition of Javier Santa Maria, is that the pronounce yeah. right? Okay. Owner of property, 3 Clifton Street, five. lot number 99. Let's make sure we get that address right. Is it five. three? Five. It's five, five, five Clifton. Five. Okay, sorry. Five Clifton Street, uh, lot 99, plan 2001, seeking special permit for uh, the gazebo, and the gazebo is not 31, it's going to be 28 now? 28 feet wide, correct. Okay, 28-1 by 17-5, gazebo and a variance for a, it's going to be... Do we want to do them separate? Uh, yeah, let's do Take the special permit first. Okay, special permit. Grounds for the special <coughs> permit would be that it, it is no more detrimental and um, it would be conditioned on the gates on the side of the garage, on either side of the garage, remaining unlocked. Right, and conditions that there are fire and inspectional service sign offs? Yes. Did we miss and condition that the the water issue be dealt with as best possible. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else that some of you we want in there? So the water being dealt with as best as possible. What we agreed on is the water going up to the front of the garage. Correct. Okay. Yep. And can, we, that. can we also add since the the letter from the freight department is conditional conditional upon the installation instructions of the manufacturer, can we get a copy of that filed with the building inspector? Yes. Yes, we have something to inspect to. Yep, okay. okay. So, gates unlocked, the fire and building inspector to sign off, uh, the water to be directed towards the front. Yeah. yeah. And was there a th another the thing? Installation instructions from the manufacturer. Okay, uh, so that would be the grounds for uh, variant uh, for the uh, special permit. Do I have a second? Second. Stephanie? Mr. Rossetti? Yes. Sorry. Um, Mr. Cannon? Yes. Mr. Riley? Yes. Mr. Northrop? Yes. Mr. Travers? Yes. Now the variance. Okay, on the variance, and the variance instead of uh, 0.4 would be 3. Point. Well, 3.1 or 3.6. 3.6. And that's on the new plan that you have there in the table. Over on the table over here. Yeah. This one. Yeah. Okay. And if you look on the table, that's what I have. 3.6. 3.6. Okay. Uh, 3.6 side yard setback where 10 is required and a pre existing side yard setback of. 2.9 and that would where 10 is required that would remain the same um, uh, 2.9 setback where 10 is required uh, grounds would be uh, the topography of the area it's uh, a, kind of a wet area you've got the mark in there and um, same conditions as a position of the house on the wall. And same conditions as a special permit. I'm sorry. Yes, same, same conditions, conditions as a special yes. permit. And and that remains a single family. And that it remains a single family house. Yeah. Thank you, Chris. Yeah. Stephanie? <coughs> Someone second? I have second. all second. Second. Mr. Rosetti? Yes. Mr. Cannon? Yes. Mr. Riley? Yes. Mr. Northbrook? Yes. Mr. Travers? Yes. All set. Thank you. Thank you. The second condition, I'll read it in first. On the condition of trunk space, LLC, about us to the property at 1715 Broadway, Lot number 26, plan number 2030, owned by CNP Realty Trust, seeking an appeal to the building inspector's decision to not revoke a building permit for the subject property. Trunk Space LLC believes this is a non conforming use, and the, um, was it the abutter asked for a continuance correctly? 
Yes. And we should need to take a vote on the continuance. Yeah. Motion to continue. Yeah, tell them that's fine. Okay. <coughs> Stephanie? Mr. Rossetti? Yes. Mr. Romano? Yes. Mr. Cannon? Uh, yes. He's out. Oh, I'm sorry. Out. Mr. Riley? Yes. Mr. Northrup? Yes. Mr. Travis? Yes. <coughs> okay. On the I, on, I apologize for not pronouncing names correctly. On the position of Elaine Fernandez, owners of property at 14 Westford Street, lot number 19, plan number 2022, seeking a special permit for an accessory dwelling. And is the petitioner here? Yes. Give us an idea of what you're looking to do. Uh, actually, I want to do is uh, in loss on a basement. Is okay. I have the basement done since I bought the house, and the only thing I want to do there, I want to add a bathroom. Oh, no, bedroom, I'm sorry, bedroom. one bedroom <laughs> and, nice. and the stove. Okay, you have a kitchen, kitchen area? Yes, okay. Everything is done from where, from when I bought, and I have a pictures here if you want to see. Well, we did, we did go by. Yes, happy if you can pass those around. I um, have on the phone, so going by the property, it looks like the necessary parking is there. There's plenty of parking. Yeah, the four spaces thing. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Much on the back here. Yeah. Yep. 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 Back door. Yep. Yep. Okay. Okay. You might want to show show it to the okay. chair. Okay. Okay. This is the front of my house. Yeah. This is the this. one one side. Yeah. Oh, and you're driving the other side too, right? Yeah. And then this is your full size door in the your back. <coughs> and you have full size windows. Yes. And this is the back. Back one entrance. back. Yeah. But no. The entrance is mm. this one. This is the exit. Have two. You have two in there. Okay. Yes. Full size. And then I have inside like this. Mm. Oh, very nice. See? Yeah. See? I'm <laughs> sorry. I no, that's okay. <laughs> and this is this is where we're going to make the bedroom. My okay, son gotcha. going to take this out. Put a, put a wall there, yeah. Yeah, and then have the bathroom. Uh, okay. Okay? Okay. If all the members can know it by the pictures. It Does looks like far as... Do you want to see the pictures? No, I saw it. Um, <laughs> it looks like they certainly have the egresses yeah. we'll walk up. from windows and, and doorways. And, and everything else. Um, what do we have for a size on this? It says 17. Oh, I'm sorry. That's got to be the whole building. Um, Living area 1,227 square feet. But doesn't that include? No, no, no. That, that's the footprint of the house. That's How big is the unit? It ought to be over 900 square feet. Is there's a laundry area and there's a mechanical room. Mm -hmm. okay. If you subtract those out, I think you're around 800. Okay. Somewhere between seven and eight. Well, we have 900 square feet and it does allow for 10% variance. So technically we go to 990. So we would be under, people satisfied that we're under the number yep. if we take out the mechanical. Absolutely, yes. Okay. Um, the, the entire footprint of the house downstairs. Right. And who's 20. going to be living in the house? Huh? <coughs> who's going to be living in the unit? I'll be a relatives mainly. It's they just come for to like a, our mother will be coming in. Do you have an affidavit signed? Well, she isn't going to. Uh, it, it, she's coming to to visit for an extended period, but then she's going back to Brazil, and we have a lot of family members that come in there. So, it's like it's just something that to have for 
them to stay so they feel comfortable and <coughs> and eventually we might be moving her mother permanently but not yet well you, yeah it's an accessory unit it needs to be rent you know yes rented to, to, to a family member right. they have to sign an Correct. affidavit if that saying was to, that they're going to be living there absolutely if that was to happen we would we would absolutely so you're going sure to have to get that but you're going to have to take that affidavit and that has to be done prior to this being that's going to be a condition here that the family member that's going to live in there is named. Okay. If she goes back to Brazil on vacation or whatever, and a niece and nephew stay in there, you deal with it within the family. Okay. But it's not a for rent unit. Right. Um, but we would need an affidavit stating that she's going to be the one that's living there. Okay. And Stephanie will help you fill that out next week because that needs to be part of the package. Okay. Okay. Very easy. Don't be concerned. You can work through on that. Okay. Um, and you want you have two regresses from it. The windows. Yes. Do you have any questions? It seems like you have met the requirements. Um, no, I don't have any question. I just want to, to do the things that I'm supposed to do, but yeah. legally. You, you you want to do it right? Yeah. Yes, the right way. I, I and this is new for me. I no, never. No, no, you're doing you're not doing things <laughs> the right way. But just you got to work on the family affidavit. Okay. Okay. And we have everything from the the fire. The fire the department. department in the already approved everything. Okay. okay. So I have everything here. Mm -hmm. So if you guys want to see. Yes, we should see that that you have that for the file. Because is I have to change upstairs too, so that's where they showed us the plans of where we would need to put the specific smoke detectors, the carbon monoxide detectors. And the building inspector will have to go in again once the bedroom is built. We're correct, and, and make sure everything is in the right place. Once we get the permitting and the build out. Bob, when you are done, if you can give that to Stephanie for the file. Um, are there any questions or comments from the audience? Okay. Nothing in the nobody in the audience? So you're not changing the footprint at all, so there shouldn't be any difference. But we have to worry about any drainage issues. Because there's no building going the outside, you're not going to see any difference in the I'm house. not going yeah. to do anything outside. Okay. Um, so, no more comments from the from the board. Christian, I think we have two letters from is that the right one from the abutters, uh, fourteen. Is that yeah, fourteen Westwood. I can get these two. There were a number of letters. There you go. It couldn't be this way. Um, from Mark Sacco. Mm -hmm. And he was more concerned, I think, that new, there would be new structures and there aren't that might affect some water drainage, things like that. Mm -hmm. um, I think it would fall within his scope. And yeah, and it's also in his wife sent the letters stating similar things. I've seen those yeah, his letters and emails. Again, we all have these get that, yeah, but get that off to Stephanie. Yeah. So seeing no other comments from the audience and no comments from the board, do I have a motion? Motion is closed to Harry. Yeah. Second. Good. Ms. Schwartz, uh, I can read it in. <coughs> to read it in. Okay. And on this one, um, no. Peter is not voting. <coughs> Um, all right. <coughs> on the petition of Eileen Fernandez, owner of the property at 14 Westford Street, lot number 19, plan number 2022, seeking a special permit for an accessory dwelling. Move to allow the special permit on the grounds that it would not be substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood than the existing non conforming structure. And it's always. It's Remains a single family home. Even though an affidavit required from the family member. Yes. Yeah, I think that takes care of it. Um, Second. Seconded. Stephanie? 
Yes. Can you see it? Yes. Yes. Mr. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. All set. So if you have any questions at the beginning of the week, you're going to talk to Stephanie. She's, right. She's the boss. Okay? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome. I'll talk to you next week. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. On the petition of Carlos Alcantara, owners of property at 23 Brookfield Lane, lot number 2.1, plan number 2024, a special permit to build a house in a driveway, and a variance for a 13.4 frontage where 100 is required, and the applicant saying it's used me requires it's prior to 1979. Is the applicant is here? I am on behalf of the of own of the owner. He's here, but I'll I'll be speaking. All right. Could you make sure that Stephanie has your name and address? She does. I think I think so. Your name and address is. Can you state it? Yes, Isabel Ponte, 32 North Milton Street. Uh, Malden, Massachusetts, 02148. And you're a friend just helping with the I'm the architect. The, the architect, okay. Yes. Mr. Um, Chairman, so, I'm sorry, just sorry to interrupt. Just before we continue, the logistical thing here, we've called out on the on the agenda who will sit out on each. Um, on 14 Houston, since it's um, already been heard, it, it says here that you would sit out um, that one. From the vote? Yeah. But you were on it originally, <coughs> earlier in the year. But this is a different petition. We haven't heard it tonight. Yeah, I know, but we heard it earlier this year. That was a different petition. Okay, so yeah. you're okay to... Yeah, I'm gonna, I, I still might, I'm going to participate as we do in the talk, in the debate on it, but not in the vote. Well, that's why I'm bringing it up. If you're going to set out the vote, then maybe we need to rearrange who sets out. There's only a few of these applicants left. Well, I think I think I can still sit out on that, even if I do have something to say on it. Okay. That's the way. Anytime any of us are sitting out on a particular issue, you can tell. So, yeah, make your thoughts just known. Vote. Just the vote. Okay. I'll be sitting vote. out on the vote. Okay. All right. Back to Brookfield Lane. Yep. Okay. Um, one thing that confused me is I saw something about in 1979, it did meet zoning, it and did. then they gave up the land? To the neighbor, yes. Yeah. So it was included on the package uh, with the two um, the two plans, and then the ultimately the one that was recorded with the Registry of Deeds in um, 1979. So Brookfield Lane used to um, continue to after the cul-de-sac. You can see it on the on the plan and when it did that that parcel had the 100 frontage so at some point in 79 it was given or and I we all I also heard although there's no documentation to it I'll say it that they tried to build on this plot in 1979 and it got turned down by a board you that know I anything about yeah. that I do not <laughs> yes yeah that's true We'll, we'll, we'll get to the audience, so <laughs> don't worry. We'll hear from every everybody will get their chance to say. Okay. Whatever they want. Um, my concern is that whenever you go to a driveway, and I looked at it, and I can see this, it's a good sized piece of land. I'm concerned about two things. Number one is usually when there's a driveway there, you look for the building, I talked to the building department, looking for a minimum of 20 feet for a driveway. This is well under that. So they go in with the driveway. I mean, the neighbors are both there on both sides. It really just doesn't have the required width to get into the property. I don't know why they gave it up, whether there was monetary compensation when they did that. The other concern I have is that it's going to be very expensive to build it. I would think there's going to be Hillside Protection Act is going to fall within on this property anyway. Well, Peter, you might know more about that than yeah. most of us with the planning board experience. But I would expect to build there, it's also hillside protection. But I'm more concerned with not having a minimum of 20 feet, even to get a driveway down in there. 
than anything else. I don't know. So your concern for the 20 feet is driveway of personal 20 use? 20 foot of frontage on, on the street right there to put the driveway in and to find a way. This is only 13. I mean, you look at the two stakes. They're pretty close together. There's not a car's going each way. It's tight. Um, and when I talk with the building inspector, they they claim that anything like this should be a minimum of 20 feet. This is well under that. Um, do you have anything to add? Do you want me to open up to the audience right now? Or? Um, so the owner owns 11 Daisy, which is behind this parcel. Yeah. Um, you know, when I spoke to the building inspector, there was concern about um, a fire department vehicle having access because of the 13. Yes. Um, so we were, um, we're we're open to providing a, an easement for access through the 11 Daisy property if needed. So if the if the 13 feet for a personal driveway is enough. Um, we could grant the access through an easement um, to the back of the property. If yeah, that wasn't presented. We never saw <laughs> anything on that. No, no, no. I'm before tonight. Um, I don't know what 11 Daisy is made up of. We okay. didn't have a chance to examine examine where the house sits on that lot or how this where this easement would come in okay. for, from. So it does add something, but I'm just saying that's not it in itself. Okay. Anything else on the board right now, or should I open up to the audience? The, Mr. Chairman, the, the issue of hillside protection, um, you are going to run into that on the, I guess the, I don't know if it would be the west side or the south side of the house. Uh, when you start getting into the, uh, the hill in that area, this may be on a flat enough area so that Maybe they can get away with it, but I think it's going to have to go to the planning board um, for a determination. All right. Is it okay to open it to the audience now? Or yeah. The board of more comments. I like that. Mr. Chairman, also, yeah. the the issue on the driveway, um, it's it's kind of a significant difference into the property from the driveway, and if you had to bring a fire truck in there. Um, that's, that's kind of a long ways considering it might have to back out. You know, you can't you can't have access from Daisy um, into that. Um, that that wouldn't work. Uh, I, I think it's got an issue with that. So the the location of the house that's shown in that plan is yeah. obviously schematic. Um, yeah. We we're working with a wetland specialist because there's some riverfront area as well. Um, we can push that house a little bit. It's also shown as a rectangle. Um, that shape can change, so the access to the front of the house is closer to the driveway. Yeah. But um, yeah, it's it's still it, a the width of the driveway is still a problem because if if you bring a, a piece of equipment in there you have to get it back out again right. and that's that's a bit of a problem uh, anyone in the audience like to make any comments yes sir want to come to the podium please sure. <clears throat> just give it some room and if you give your name and address to Stephanie I'm Donald Doucette 17 Brookfield Lane speaking on my dad's behalf are you looking at where the lot is? Are you immediately to the the father immediately to the right or left? He's the lot um, where they say the hundred foot frontage was. Um, so I, looking at where the thirteen feet is going in. Be to the right. Yeah, you know, be to the right at the very end of the culvert. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Yeah, the house that's opposite the rest of them. Um, you know, like I said, I'm speaking for my dad, 17 Brookfield Lane, one of the direct surrounding homes. Uh, the same situation has come up in the past and was rejected sometime around 1979. The current proposal uh, should be denied due to the requirement of 100 feet and only having 13 whatever feet it is. Um, it was also never part of the subdivision. 
Um, please record number 17 in opposition of this whole plan. All right, thank you. Anyone else? <laughs> no, I'm at 14 Brookfield Lane, which is the other side, give, the other um, side of the property. Can you give and Stephanie your name? Frank Pucha, 14 Brookfield Lane. Okay. I mean, this, just give you what we're talking about, where 17 was. And yeah, I got it. You got it? <laughs> yeah. I mean, and here's got a, it right here, yeah. It shows on, yeah. shows on the plot plane. And there's the little stakes yeah. were. You got that? Got that. Too. Okay. Yeah. All right. We all went and saw the property. Okay. The were, all right. Um, and um, I'm in opposition to the for that proposal, number one. It's way under the, the limit. Number two, right now, when there's a snowstorm, there's only one place to put the snow, and that would be where this driveway would be right now. Because <laughs> if you look at the cul-de-sac, there's four driveways. So when they come down the street, there's no place to put the snow but put over there. So I don't know what they were going to do with the snow if they allow the driveway to be in there. How long have you been in your house? I've been there since 1986. And I don't know anything about the property, you know, being... Um, what well, happened in 79? What happened in 79? Mm -hmm. I mean, there was... The, it was a one. I bought it from the original owner, which was the house was built in 1960 something, yeah. and and there was never not, not anything on the deed about acquiring uh, more property from the existing lot. So I don't know where this hundred feet existed at one time and who gave it up. Or, and it certainly wasn't from Mr. Doucette's side, and it wasn't on my okay. side. So I don't know where that came from. But okay. anyway. Um, you know, there's traffic on the street. There's, there's, you know, where, where a car's going to park if they were visiting. You know, the access to the property with emergency vehicles, it's just not conducive. And it's. All right. Thank you, sir. Okay. Anyone else in the audience like to say anything? Yes, sir. Either one. We'll get you. Good evening. Uh, my name's Art the Board, 13 Brookfield Lane. I've lived uh, on Brookfield Lane for 62 years. Uh, my mother and father purchased the house and not knowing the other surveyor said that um, that was not not a dead end street. That's always been a dead end street since the um, houses were built in 1962. It, uh, the Galveston, yeah. It's always been number 17, the White House where Mr. Doucette okay. resides right now. A um, lot of traffic that's coming up and down the street now. I'm trying to resolve that issue with the town manager to have a sign put up. I just had a, a recent neighbor just move in with two young children playing out in the cul-de-sac. I played out in the cul-de-sac for many years not having to worry about traffic and everything. And when the fire department does come down, because they've had to respond to my mother when she was living, it is very difficult for them. They have to back up numerous times. And also, Mr. Pusha mentioned mentioned about the snow snow removal uh, sometimes we don't we don't even get a snow removal we have to call to have it removed and uh, have to call the town so I'm, in, I'm opposed to this uh, okay okay thank you right. yes sir uh, uh, we have one more for Brookfield Lane yeah, yeah no okay no, yeah, can no. I go first yeah. let him go and then you're next Thank you. Uh, Carlos Alcantara, I'm actually the owner of the property. Um, the way I see that is the, the cul-de-sac was designed to have a house there. The only thing we know on record is that it was given somehow, uh, it was given away in 1979. Other than that, it's just what we, as you said, you know, I heard this and that, but on paper, that's the only thing that we have, that the city gave it away, so, um, the City way gave I gave it away? No, like somebody. Somebody, correct. Forfeited. The, yeah. the, the current owner that time forfeited some land, I think, so the other lot can be could be developed. Right, and um, if we look around, there is hundreds and hundreds of homes that has these ten foot driveways. So fire trucks doesn't really pull in driveways. They park on the street and they carry their their hose. Um, Right now, like I understand the neighbors, and the way I see now is um, 
my property is just been filled with trash everybody makes that a dumping spot and if you drive there tomorrow you see how that looks like I think it will look so much nicer though if we do it properly with the seat approval and um, you know I'm that's what I'm advocating for all right you know? thank you thank you ma'am Good evening, my name is Rosemary Reed and I live at 8 Brookfield Lane and we purchased the house in 1977. In 1979 there was an issue that we did try to build on that land and that was denied. Right. So yes, That's we remember we all gathered down at the end of yeah. the cul-de-sac. <laughs> yes, so that was denied. Um, I'm against this proposal it would open up the street it's a cul-de-sac it's uh is always been that and people have purchased their houses and that's a perk to be on a cul-de-sac so i don't think that this proposal would benefit any of the new residents on the street or any of the old residents of the street for and we've had to have fire egress fire apparatus and ambulances come in and out for other people, my husband included, who, who uh, was sick. And it was very difficult. So being a resident on Brookfield Lane and buying this house in 1977 with the perk that it was a dead-end cul-de-sac and all the kids <laughs> could play, I'm against this uh, proposal. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Anyone else in the audience? Yes, sir. Just a little explanation about the side variance there. It's my dad's side yard. And if you look at the original subdivision, this property was not included in the original subdivision. Um, but his side yard, if you look at his deed, it encompasses all that land that they supposedly gave back. They didn't give nothing back. It went to court and they won it back. Well, they won the rights to it. Um, there was some sort of an oversight and the, the courts made a ruling on it. You can look the paperwork up. It did go to court. Okay. When, when did Mr. it go to court? It finished, finished um, right around 1979. It was a, um, I don't know all the particulars on it, but there's, there's documentation on it all. I have some of it. Okay. Anyone else in the audience? Any other comment from the board? Mr. Chairman? Yes. It seems to be some questions <coughs> about what happened in 79. Yeah. And <clears throat> whether there was a court decision or whatever. It, or a Board of Appeals decision. Yeah. It, Stephanie couldn't find anything. And the records go back pretty far that there, this board denied it. So maybe it was. I can okay. produce some documentation to you people. There's just so much of it, I don't know what to give you. Hmm. We don't know who denied it. Somebody did. The Board of Appeals did. You think it was the Board of Appeals? I guarantee it was the Board of Appeals, okay. yes. The yeah. court reversed the decision for them. Okay. That's not a record step, I think. It was around the time I was on, but uh, I don't recall this one. You know, could have been 45 years ago? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Before your father. <laughs> it could have been. It could have been. It was your father, not you. <laughs> so there, there are records of the two plans that I was inclu I included in the package. Yeah, you, you can see the 75 it. plan as showing that as being part of the story. I understand, but we, I think, just so you understand, and Rasan, you need four out of five votes. I don't think you have them. Because I think you'll find at least two of us unhappy with the size, not having that 20 feet wide. So you have a couple of options open to you. You go back and try to rework a plan to make get this property accessible. Maybe working something in off Daisy. I, I don't know. If you go forward with a vote and it turns negative, you can't come back with a plan for two years. So I don't know if you want to try to 
withdraw without prejudice and try to rework something that maybe will work to access this land? Like I said, again, from working yeah. through one daisy or something? <clears throat> Or you just withdraw, withdraw it. Because if you go forward, you're going to get, you have to get four out of five. Okay. And I don't think you have it. You could. And, and you're saying if it's denied, then it's two years? that it's two that. Okay. years before you come back to us okay. with a new plan. And the way this, and the board changes all the time, members. But I really feel this board isn't going to probably go forward with anything less than 20 feet of the driveway going in. Okay. I can't think of any any examples in town. I know there are properties that you'll find out there that have those kind of driveways, but they're probably more than 40, 50 years in existence. Nothing new that's less than a 20 foot driveway going back there that I would know of. Um, okay. So if you want to take a minute to decide what you're going to do, and we'll go forward. Okay. I, I think um, I think we'll take some time to regroup. So you if you don't mind, with, withdraw. You want withdraw. to ask Please. us to withdraw, and we'll do that with our press and see if you can come up with some type of a plan that does work. Okay. But like I said, I don't think anything less than twenty feet is going to do it. Okay. At least in my the way that I'm thinking. Um, I just looked down the cul de sac. It looks the entrance going in, they just look too small for me. If it was going back in there to a great big flat open field, that would be one thing, but it's going in there to a hill that's you know hillside. So, I mean, I think you're doing the right thing by withdrawing. Yep, we'll, we'll do that. We'll okay. withdraw without so prejudice. I'm looking please. for a motion withdraw without prejudice. So move. Seconded. And Stephanie? <coughs> I'm sorry. Mr. Rosetti. Yes. Mr. Romano. Yes. Mr. Cannon. Yes. Mr. Riley. Yes. Mr. Travers. <laughs> yes. And to you, or does anyone in the audience have any more questions? So you understand they're going to try to come up with a plan that might work. If they don't, then they don't. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Come up with a plan for. Procure lane or the one of the something that will be something that might be. I, I really don't, I can't speak for what a board would do in three years from now or something because whether I'm here or not or whether we're the same members, but it's unlikely that the board's going to go forward and then they got to go to planning board after that because the sales side protection because of the land. I don't think this is going anywhere unless they come up with a plan. And maybe there is something through Daisy. You know, and, and this is a secondary entrance into the property or something. But we're going to allow them to see if they can come back with something that works. <clears throat> okay? okay? I wish you the Thank best you. of luck. Thank you. Sir, I don't, we don't like to say no to anybody. That's and we're willing fine. to work with you, okay? That's why we're here. And for we want to work, we, don't want, we have to protect the neighborhood and what their needs. Absolutely. Okay? Thank All right, thank you. thank you. I'll give, we'll take a two minute recess to get to let people to get out. Nice to see you. So, the next one, you're out. I am out of the next one, but I will still be speaking. Yeah. Right? Okay. Um, on this next one, I'm going to turn over the chair to Mr. Rosetti. We have six members, and only five can vote, so we take turns on setting out certain positions. So I'm sitting out on the vote on this one, but I'm still going to be a uh, soapy <laughs> throwing my comments and such. So I'll let Mr. Rosetti take over. Okay, um, on the petition of Raquel uh, Flores, owner of property 14 Houston Ave, lot 444 and 445, plan 3014, seeking a special permit to add shed dormers on the rear of the house. All variances were addressed in the previous ZBA public hearing. Uh, the petitioner here? Okay, would like to tell us what's going on? 
Good evening, board. I am here on behalf of, as you said, homeowner Raquel Flores, who is seeking a special permit to construct a new dormer. What's your relationship with her? I am the contractor slash registered building official for okay. the site. So, my name is Victor Benitez. Nice to meet you all. We were previously here, as you stated, to see if a special permit for an addition would be accepted by the board and by the community back in February, and thankfully it was. We already finished all the proposed framing work that was stated in the previous permit. And you can see the work that was previously in the previous permit, this existing permit, the new one. But now that Raquel, the homeowner, has gotten a good look at how everything was framed, she was looking for more light going into the attic, or more glazing, however you would like, you would like to call it. So she suggested constructing a new dormer on the rear side of the newly framed roof. And the new dormer that we'll be constructing will be going across the entire side of the rear roof or the dimension or beyond the existing dimensions of the home. It's going to be 24 feet wide across from left side of the home to the right side of the home, 16 feet long from rear side of the home to the roof ridge. We'll be framing with 2 by 12 rafters and collar ties as shown in the building plans. Roof pitch will be a 12 out of 12 pitch. Exterior walls will be framed with 2 by 6s. Interior walls with 2 by 4s. And the interior room height will be 7 feet 9 inches right under the 2 by 12 rafters once everything is framed for the new dormer. So, what's the overall height of the proposed addition? For like the entire building? Yeah, what would the, the building height be? That'd be the entire building, right? From yeah, but what is it from ground to, oh, okay. to the peak? So to it's the 26 feet. Let me see. 26 feet and okay. six and a quarter inches okay. high. So 26 feet high, and that includes the dorm. Yes, sir. Okay. And <clears throat> you're not going outside of the footprint no. that's existing now? Exactly. No, we will not go beyond the dimensions of the home. Okay, and this was before us before, and we approved the second floor. Uh, so you're not adding a third floor to the house? No, right? sir. So you guys previously approved second floor and yeah. attic. Yeah. But now that we framed the attic, you know, the roof has a yeah. pitch. She wants the rear side of the roof to have a dormer for more lighting. Yeah. Yeah. That way you can stand up in the room without a problem. Exactly. It will be used for an open room storage slash playroom, so you guys know. Mr. Chairman, a couple of comments. Um, directly and indirectly, I've heard from town meeting members in the area, the building inspector, um, indirectly through neighbors. They are very concerned that the homeowner wants to put in an accessory unit in here. Um, and I know that you're the contractor, so the, what's the plan going forward? Is there, it's going to remain a single family house with just one kitchen and no accessory unit? No, none at all. It will remain none in one all. family home. All right. Um, you, are, you, have, you understand also, and I know a lot of people don't realize until after they buy the property, unfortunately, that FEMA doesn't allow a basement to be built out. Okay or anything if you're in a flood zone. This house isn't. Because it's in a flood zone, they couldn't put an accessory unit in the basement even if they wanted. They can't put a family room in. The building inspector will not issue any permit for any construction in that basement at all. It's gotta just be strictly a basement. Uh, strictly, a, exactly, a strict basement, okay? Um, Certainly, with I believe the lot's only like 5,000 square feet. Yes, just what three. I just want to make sure that you can pass this off to the homeowners in case they ever think about doing it. I don't see the parking requirement being met. If they put an accessory unit, they need four units of parking. Okay. It's tight with two. <laughs> no, yeah, if they were I mean, to do that. So yeah. they wouldn't. <clears throat> so this has got a. This is going to be contingent. Mr. Chairman, that it remains a single family home and the homeowner fully understands that it cannot eat, be a two family, it cannot have an accessory unit. Can you also just let me, what's the makeup, what's the room count? Four rooms total. Four rooms total. Four, only four rooms? Yes. How many bedrooms? 
Four bedrooms, four bedrooms, sorry. Oh, I thought you were referring rooms. to the bedrooms. Yeah. So there's going to be four bedrooms? Yes. And all the bedrooms are upstairs? Second floor has three bedrooms, and first floor has one bedroom. Okay. Okay. And then it's, uh, and beyond that, on the first floor, is what, a kitchen, a dining room, a living room? Yep, exactly right. Kitchen, dining room, living room, and one bathroom. Okay. I'm kind of monopolizing you know, your chair. Yeah. Don't worry. You said Any other questions one from the board? In the whole house? No. There will be two bathrooms in the whole house. One in the first floor and one in the second floor. Yep. Okay. Yeah, I've had so many phone calls, just emphatic. I just want to drive home. And that the, it's fair that the homeowner knows what they can and can't do. Yes, yes, thank you. And cannot have even an accessory unit here. Um, because it's a lot of house for that size lot. Yeah. If you were coming to us to expand any footprint, I don't know if I'd be in favor of it just because the, it, there's so much lot coverage there anyway. It's tight. Yeah. Um, do I have any other questions from the board? Yeah. No, I'm, I'm sorry. Okay. Board members. Thank you. And tell us again the size of the dormer. 24 feet wide going from the left side of the home, looking at the home, from left side of the home to the right side of the home. And then going from the rear side of the home to the ridge, the roof ridge, it'll be 16 feet. And that's the question, just to be clear, it was already asked, I think, it's not extending the footprint of the home in any direction? No, sir. And is it, is it higher than the current peak of the house? So no, it's going to be the same peak. We're just lifting up one, the rear side of the home to be able to construct this dormer. Okay. All right. Got it. Thank you. So Thank you. Just to clarify, it's only two floors, the highest point is 26, 27 feet, and um, <clears throat> you're not adding a third floor to the house no. or anything like that. And it's not going to have an accessory, meaning another family unit with a kitchen, a bathroom, a bedroom, uh, in the, so you have two of them and a locked door in between. No, sir. Okay. Okay. Board members, any other questions, comments? I have no questions. The, the dorm room is going to be used strictly for storage only? Storage playroom, yeah. Okay. I just want to make sure. Sometimes people okay. add a bed in there and mm -hmm. rent them out. Yeah, I understand. No, no, it will not be used for that. Okay. okay. <coughs> Any other board members' questions? No, funny. Building none. Audience, anyone want to speak? Be recorded. Going once. Going twice. <laughs> Last chance. Okay. Anyone care to offer a motion? Motion to close the hearing. Second. Okay, motion made and seconded. Who wants to read it in? I can read it in. Stephanie? On the petition of Raquel Flores, owner of the property at 14 Houston Ave, lot number 444445, plan number 3014, seeking a special permit to add shed dormers on rear of house. Um, I need to grant the special permit on the grounds that it would not be any more detrimental to the neighborhood than the existing and condition. condition to remain one family that nobody lives up there. Single um, family house. Yeah. Single family house. No accessory units and it no remains uh, under the height limit. Um, yes. Uh, 20, 27 feet 27, or whatever yeah. it's going to be. And single family house. We said that, yeah. yeah. I'll okay. second that motion. Okay, we got a motion that's made, seconded, um, non debatable. All those in for Stephanie? Ms. Romano? Yes. Mr. Cannon? Yes. Mr. Riley? Yes. Mr. Yelper? Yes. Mr. Rosetti? Yes. Okay, you're all set. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Pierre. Like the old days. <laughs> On the petition of Hilltop Realty Trust, here of the Gutierrez Company, owners of property at 723 729 Broadway, on behalf of Foot Walker, lot number 2223 and plan number 1036, a variance to allow a secondary wall sign, illuminated kid Foot Walker. And you're here for the petitioner and your name and address to Stephanie. Sure. First of all, I'm just over getting sick. I'm sorry for my voice. I apologize. That's okay. Um, my name is Jennifer Ronneberger. My company is Go Permit. 
Um, my address is 9061 Woodlark Terrace, Boynton Beach, Florida, 33472. Ready? Yep. Okay. It's an idea what you're looking to do. Absolutely. So we have a Foot Locker location that just opened up, 759 Broadway. We're looking to have an additional wall sign, just like you said, reading Kids Foot Locker, measuring 62 square feet on the north elevation. The reason why we're here is because we cannot have an entrance on that elevation because of the way that the property is laid out. The building, the parking lot kind of goes like this. When you step out of our building area, you would just do like a complete drop. There's no foundation or that's anything there to even allow us to have a door that's there so we're not even cap able to even put something that's there so we're asking for the ability to please have a sign there without an entrance you need a ladder yes you do <laughs> um, I know when I pulled in looking for the property and discovered that it was the old Boston decor was that it yes yeah um, I'm like where is this place mm -hmm. it, it's it needs the sign because of, for direction. Correct. I mean, I you never find it. Correct. Where's Foot Locker? You can't, if you're driving down the highway, you're in, you're beyond it before you see Foot Locker. Yes, so exactly. I, this is a one point, one place where I think the variance is required. Um, Thank you. Do I have any comments from the board? The sign itself, uh, as far as lighting, it's not gonna have anything flashing. No, it's going to look like the one that's currently installed on the front. It's just going to be white, illuminated LED channel letters, low voltage. Okay. Mm -hmm. Shut off after the uh, close for the evening? Yes. Okay. Well, be on the time or something. Right. They're always on timers. Yep. It's normally like a, maybe an hour or so after they close. Yes. Okay. That's required. One hour after close. Yes. Anything else from the board? I have no questions. Mm -hmm. Anything from the audience? Yes, ma'am. Come on up to the podium and give Stephanie your name and number. Hi, uh, my name is Akiko Sugimoto. Uh, address is 9 Thomas Street. Uh, yeah. I mean, uh, Hillview West Condominium. Okay. So one of the uh, con building of the condo, just uh, facing back of the mall, back of the store. I got you. And my unit is directly behind that store. So okay. I'm, I'm not against anything, I don't think. I just want to make, I just came here to get uh, details and also wanted to make sure I feel comfortable with the sign. Uh, because uh, during the It summer, sounds like you want to find out if that sign is going to, you're going to be able to see it from your unit. Right, or like flashing or make sure because uh, during the summer. There won't be any, she mentioned there will not be any flashing. Right, I heard. There won't be any movement or anything like that. Okay, how about um, the installation? Because during the summer when the store was actually built, I heard many noises, uh, even in the evening. And also one day there was like dust came to my, directly to my uh, okay. building. So I want to, I've been nervous. I want to make sure I feel comfortable with anything yeah. happening. That's where the sign is going to go. Right. You can't see it because the sign is in the way, but yeah. you can see the condo is behind there. Right, I'm I, like right here. Maybe if you stand on a chair or something and you look out your window, you might be able to see it, but mm. I kind of doubt it. So it's not going to flash, no, like it's no. saying. Yeah, it's I, not going to move or flash. Or, yeah. You know, How about installation? Yeah, I don't, want, I don't know is it going if to you may know of, is it going the to be like I can tell you for the for the installation you're looking for? Well, I'm address? wondering if, if she, do you know where her condo is? Unfortunately, I don't. I'm from, right be, I'm from Florida. That's I don't a, know. Right behind the building there's a condo developed. Where is it? I mean, My, it has it right here. Yeah, but I have a picture of my view from my window. Sign. You can't really oh, yeah, see it, no. but there's a condo back there. No, not at all. You won't be able to see it from your house, no. Absolutely not, because you can't even see the top of your building from this location. Yeah. Yeah. So I can tell you, as far as the installation, the installation takes one, it'll take maybe maybe three hours at the absolute most. It'll be during the day. Okay. Okay, not early in the morning, just regular day. It'll be up and wired and done quickly. <coughs> I, I just want to show you the picture from my... So you're probably okay. I wasn't sure if it's going to be this side or this side. This is you might the, have to help because I don't know this area. You can ask him. So this is from my window view. Yeah. And so the store is right here. 
And then I think the nail is going to be on it's, this side. It's going to be further out than that. Right. See, that's that's back here. Yeah. Uh, so this this would be up here somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I, I, I don't think you're going to be able to see it. Okay, okay. Just to make sure that you can't see it, how, what's the height off the ground, you know, of the sign? I don't, certainly don't want to go too low with the lower, <laughs> well, the less it, chance of being seen from in back. Yeah, we don't want it to be lower because then it's going to not look correct on the facade. Okay. And it's that's not going to be, you know, aesthetically pleasing for anybody. Sorry, I, I don't. I don't think it should be a problem. Yeah. Um, okay. It's I don't know the exact mention. measurement. I'm sorry. I agree that it needs the sign there. It was black when when I came when, drive, when yeah. I drove by today. So yeah. Okay. But then. Well, um, thank you for coming out. But then does the store close? Nine. I think the store closes at nine. So we'll turn off at ten or mm -hmm. nine. Ten. Ten. Yep. Yeah. I then, think it closes at. Does it close at nine or does it close at ten? Probably nine. I just looked, I just woke this up before I came up here. Of course, I can't remember. That. It closes at eight. Yeah, it's already closed. Okay. So it's, okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you for the time. Thank you. Anyone else from the audience? Any other comments from the board? Do I have a motion? Motion to close the hearing. Okay. Second. Who wants to read it in? I'll read it. On the petition of Hilltop Realty Trust, there are the criteria as company owners of the property at 723-729 Broadway on behalf of the Foot Locker, lot number 2223, plan number 1036 requesting a variance to allow a secondary wall sign illuminated kids foot walker. I make a motion to grant the uh, sign on the grounds that it will not be any more detrimental to the neighborhood. Do I have a second? Yeah. Second. Uh, any conditions on that? You just wanted to add the uh, sign will be turned off one hour, hour after closing. Close yes, okay. agreed. Yeah. And Chris, you are out on this one. Yeah. Okay. You you've got the size. Yes. Yeah. And it's been seconded, Stephanie. Mr. Rosetti. Yes. Ms. Romano. Yes. Mr. Cannon. Yes. Mr. Northrop. Yes. Mr. Travis. Yes. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. <clears throat> so do you still have a house in Florida? Or a <clears throat> You yeah, still have a house? Yeah, I live there. I came up for this. Where this are is my, you? This is my second time I've been actually I here. I have never seen you here before. Where, where are you? Uh, just south of West Palm in a town called Boynton Beach. Oh, so you're near Del Rey, East, East on the Coast, east side. You didn't get it. Nope. I'm telling you, everybody, it was a little rough there for a few minutes because there's a lot of repairing that went on along the whole state. We were, <laughs> everybody was shaking in their boots, I'll tell you that. Sure. Okay. All right. Thank, Thank you, you Stephanie. Thank you very All much. Right. Take care. Good to see you. You too. <clears throat> on the petition of Edison Vieira, owner of the property at 8 Avon Street, lot number 68, plan number 2001. They're speaking, seeking a special permit to add a 7 by 26.9 addition, incorporating part of the existing structure and adding an additional 6 by 6 times 14 foot deck with stairs and a variant for a pre-existing 5.6 yard setback where 15 is required and a 14.3. And I didn't get the second page. It's on the back. <clears throat> it's on the back. It's on the back. Yeah. Side yard setback where 15 is required and currently 14.4. And a pre-existing 15, 50 foot frontage where 100 is required and a pre-existing 6,500 square foot square foot lot coverage where 20,000 square feet is required. And Bob, I know you're out on this, but Stephanie, yes. are you in a butter? 
I am. I was going to so, say that when you finished. Yes. Why don't you sit out and Bob, you're in. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. And I should have said that beforehand. But That's okay. Okay. That's much, yes. But you are in the bottom. Okay. Yeah. All right. And the petitioner, you're here. Yes, yeah, so my and name is... The, uh, make sure it's Stephanie is your name and address. Oh, Stephanie, my name is Dawan Campos, the architect designer for this project from 40 Lawndale Ave in Saugus, Mass. All right. Okay. So, yeah, so like uh, the petition says, we are seeking uh, a special permit for an existing non-conforming uh, dwelling uh, where the existing setback is 15 feet and the uh, existing setback on the right side is 5.6 uh, 5 feet where the proposed uh, two floor structure that we would be adding is a setback of 8.7 and on the left side uh, also a two floor proposed ad addition squaring off the back area of the building where the setback would be a 4.3 where the existing is a 4.4 so the and then so this would be just a existing already non-conforming lot we're just looking to square off off the back i would also like to add uh, to the board uh, some approval letters that we did get from the neighbors, from the abutting neighbors. So I'd like to add that in now, if that's okay. Sure. Yeah, and there's 11 uh, letters there from abutters, direct abutters, that would, we show the, the plans and they have a, no objection to. So. From you. Well, I um, want to mention, is the owner here? Or you? Yeah, the owner is here. So you might even... Uh, got some phone calls indirectly. Question: You own the doggy daycare center out I'm front? The one, yeah, I'm the owner for the grooming. The grooming I'm place. By the lake on okay. Is, uh, yeah, yeah, so is that, that's right behind this property. Right. right, and my concern is that you're not going to use this property in the dog care yeah. center. So oh, this yeah. is going to be actually a f for a family home. Uh, so they're going to be okay. living here full time, single family home. Uh, he, they, he has also his mother coming in and living living with them. So, yeah. Okay, but you're not going to incorporate the yet. You're not going to let dogs run out there or whatever. It's got no business of the dog grooming associated with the house. Not at all, sir. And you're going to repair the fence back there where it's down so the dogs, if they did get outside, couldn't get into from yeah, Lincoln Ave Avon Street. Because of the grooming. The dog coming in and the dog don't go out. The dog just stay on inside my place. They don't. They you don't. You don't outside. have them outside. No. They don't go outside in a fenced no. area at all. No. Not okay, at all. but you so I still want to make it contingent that you repair that fence between the two no, properties. I just don't get the fence because it's it's close in there and there's going to be more easily to go in the house and the back. Well, you can put a gate on it, but I'm going to yeah, make I it. Will put a gate. I'm, I, I want to make a contingent yes. part. The fence is going to be secure and solid. That's yes, correct. So dogs couldn't get if they got out from the grooming. You're not saying that they will, but yes. a puppy can always run and run out the back, and yeah. you're chasing them. I don't want them to get into yeah, correct the backyard. I need yes. one want a separation of Avon Street and Lincoln Ave. Yes. So that that's it can have a gate on it, but that fence needs to be tight and secure. Correct. Do I have any comments from the board, Chris? looking at me like um I, I don't have an objection i'm just <clears throat> do we require anybody else to have a fence well it's falling down but, but where you got a dog room in place and the business is owned i'm just saying making sure the owner understands that the business can't carry on to the property behind it And I think that's a perfect, perfectly, perfectly yeah, fine contingency mm -hmm. for gated fence mm -hmm. to be uh, repaired and and done in the back. You're not objecting. Yeah. I understand what you're saying that yeah. we don't require somebody to have a fence, but I think this is a unique situation. We have the dog grooming place, and the homeowner lives in the property behind it. I don't want to see uh, the business fall over to the... Yeah, I, I, I'm, my own concern is I saying you have to have a fence is giving someone a $15,000 bill. There's a fence up here. I'm saying repair the fence that's there. Yeah. Okay. There's a fence there, correct? 
Yeah. So? There's a fence. Yeah, there is a fence. Yeah. There so is I'm, a fence. I'm not telling them to put up a, <laughs> yeah, <I know. laughs> a chain link fence. I'm asking them to yeah, repair the, the, secure the fence that's there. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, he's my neighbor for the left side, so uh, we're going to rebuild the, fe the, the fence for side by side. And okay. Too. So we're going to do that the next year for the summer. Okay. So. I just wanted to be secure. You understand, like the, your yes, business I'm can't sure. go into Lincoln Air business can't yes, go into Avon yeah, Street. I understand. Yeah. That was the concern. The phone calls that I've received. Yes. Okay. Do I have any comments from the audience? Speaking in favor or mm -hmm. against? Yes, ma'am. Oh, you actually answered um, Doris Piorski. You actually answered my my question. I have no objections to his addition at all. No problem. Um, I just wanted to make sure that Pet Cure will not be, have a connection with Avon Street. That's all. Um, yep. You know, either to expand the business or um, you know connect it. That's the only concern I have. Is this the old Flagger house? Hmm? Yes. This was Flagger? Yes. I think so. That's what they call yeah, it. Yeah. It's obviously been remodeled and uh, they did a nice job on making it look nice. Yes. It's very clean. Very nice. Yeah. 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 Okay. Thank you. Uh, you're welcome. Anyone else? Yes, sir. My name is Keith McCabe. I'm here representing my daughter, who's the property owner at uh, 10 Avon Street, so next door. Um, I had multiple sort of concerns or questions, and actually, like Doris, one of mine was just addressed. Um, I was concerned about the free range of from one property to the other, right? I didn't want um, like dogs. The, the, the dogs to run free, and I suppose the subse subsequent concern was for the... the because I know you, you there'd been a request for the for the overnight dog care a couple of years ago, but that's no longer no. that's no longer the case. You don't keep dogs here overnight. No. Yeah, no. and that and that's not in the plans. No, that's no, not okay. So that that was that. Um, and the other, I suppose, concern I had just was when I when I saw the plans for the the stairs, the back stairs there. My first concern was the the multifamily. No. Yeah. We'll we'll make it continue upon to remain a single family too. Yeah, exactly. yeah. And actually, those plans, all the zoning bylaws are, are okay. It's okay with zoning. Once oh, the, the structure itself is yeah. okay with is okay with the zoning. They wouldn't have a parking anyways. Yeah. 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 Um, I do have neighborhood consent letters. Um, I'll just the last name is Noonan from 18 Lynn Woodward. Uh, a Vola from 981 Street. It looks like Trees, T R E S E, from 2 Linwood Street. Bannister from 559 Lincoln Ave. And Lander Rack, I'm not sure on the pronouncing, 561 Lincoln Ave. Nascenti from 681 Street. Pavetta, it looks like, from 3 Whitney. Uh, Stephen De Janeiro from 6 Linwood. <coughs> Gilbert from 10 Linwood. Pedrosian from 12 Avon Street. <coughs> and it looks like McAloy, M A L E Y O D, I'm not sure, from 15 Avon Street. All sending letters in support. And if, if you can forward those over to Stephanie, John. John? Yes. Get those to Stephanie. Um, anything else? I don't. I think your question is pretty much got right answered that there. Yeah. And we're being emphatic that the dogs <laughs> sure. stay on yeah. Lincoln, not go to Avon. Yeah. Okay. All right. Anyone else from the audience? You can speak in favor for you. In favor. No problem. All right. Do I have a um, motion? Close. Second it. <clears throat> okay, I'll read it in. On petition of Edison Vieira, owner of property 8 Avon Street, lot 68, plan 2001, seeking a special permit to add a 7 foot by 26.9 uh, foot addition, incorporating part of the existing structure and adding an additional 6.6 .6 
by 14 deck with stairs. Um, and the grounds would be that it is no more detrimental. The condition would be that it remain a single family home and that uh, the fence in between the two properties be repaired. You can have a gate in the fence, but there has to be a, a solid closing fence. Okay. Uh, and there'll be no overlap, overlapping of the business that occurs on the Lincoln Ave property with the home. Okay. I'll second that. Okay. Uh, Stephanie? Mr. Rossetti? Yes. Mr. Cannon? Yes. Mr. Riley? Yes. Mr. Northrop? Yes. Mr. Travers? Yes. Okay. And, and all the variants? <clears throat> on the variants, uh, yeah, uh, variants for a pre existing 5.6 side yard setback where 15 is required and 14.3 side yard where 15 is required and is currently. 14.4 and a pre-existing uh, 50 foot frontage where 100 is required and a pre-existing lot coverage of 6,500 square feet where 20,000 is required. Um, it would be the size and shape of the lot. It's a pre-existing structure that predated uh, the zoning changes. Um, so, pre-existing. Do I have a second? Second. Oh, in same conditions. The same cars, conditions as the single special family, permit. Et cetera. Yeah. Wait, and I have a second. A second. So, Stephanie. Mr. Rosetti. Yes. Mr. Cannon. Yes. Mr. Riley. Yes. Mr. Walker. Yes. Travers. Yes. And you're all set. Okay. Any questions? Right. Just to Stephanie, being of the right. week, okay? Thank you. So Thank you, Mr. Do I have a motion to adjourn? To close the hearing. Second. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. That's a close adjourn.